Coming up on Ag Week TV, what to do with all that grain in the bin. One specialist offers some tips and strategies. The founder and owner of the Horsch Company is in town from Germany with big news about some changes coming for American ag exports to Europe. And it's calving season. One expert weighs in on some trends we're seeing this time around. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Shauna Olson. In times of tight margins, producers have a lot of questions these days. Joining us now is Frain Olson. He's a crops economist, marketing specialist at NDSU. And Frain, thanks for joining us, first of all. I appreciate the invitation. There's a lot of uncertainty out there, isn't there? Yeah, there's, the, you know, usually this time of year, farmers have kind of finalized their planting decisions. They may have five or 10% of the acreage they're kind of uncertain about. We'll wait to see how the spring's work goes. But this year, as I've traveled the state and talked to farmers, there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, my best guess is there's still probably 25% of the acres that farmers really haven't decided what they're going to do yet. You've traveled all around the state. You've been busy, haven't you? Uh, yeah, it's been a very, very busy feeding season. Um, I've had a chance to, to visit with a lot of farmers and try and answer their questions about what the markets are, are doing and what the opportunities might be. What are some of the biggest questions you're finding out there? So, you know, in, in this planning process, you know, farmers are going through and working with their lenders and trying to put together some, some plans, some crop plans that seem to make some sense. And the challenge we've had is that given average yields and today's price levels, uh, most crops don't pencil out. We've got a negative balance. And so the most common question I get is, which of these crops have the most upward potential? Which ones, if we have a rally or if we have a spike going on, uh, which are the crops that have the best potential? And that's a tricky question. Yes, it is. You said you've been noticing a lot of interest in pulse crops this year. That is one of the co consistent questions, especially as we get into the western part of the state. Um, the field pea and lentil prices have held up very, very well for old crop, for the crop that's already been harvested. There's been some, uh, a lot of interest in, in increasing acreage for 2016. Uh, most of that is generated because of some uh, very poor production out of India. And so the buyers from um, the Indian market have come into both the United States as well as Canada to try and purchase up more supplies, which has really uh, caused a lift in the market and a lot of interest. A big difference in the West versus East in North Dakota as far as what people are interested in in crops. Yeah, and some of that has to do with soil moisture conditions and some of it has to do with the normal rotations they have. In the Eastern part of the, part of the state, I'm sensing a little bit more interest in corn. Uh, we've been, profitability for soybeans have been very strong the last couple of years. They've been pushing the soybean rotations fairly hard. So I think some of that's going to bring, bring into balance the corn soybean rotation a little bit more. So there's a little interest in increasing corn acres. But as we get to Western North Dakota, it's kind of the opposite situation because of their, the cash prices, their basis levels that they realize in the Western part of the state. A little less interest in corn. It's a high cost uh, crop to grow. Um, the question is, well, if you're not going to grow the corn or as much corn as you did last year, what crops you're going to produce? And I think there'll be some interest in, in, um, in wheat as we move forward, but again, we'll have to wait to see. A lot of eyes are on that prospective plantings report coming out the end of this month. The planting intentions report will be watched very closely by the market. We're trying to figure out are we going to have a rebalancing of acreage. Uh, we already know that the winter wheat seedings are lower than we had expected or lower than, than last year. Um, and again, the question is, what will those acres go into? What are we going to plant on those, those winter wheat seedings? So. Okay. And for those people who still have crops in the bin, uh, any tips mm -hmm. or strategies for them? Well, and that's, I've been focusing a lot of that as I travel the state because there's still a lot of inventory, in particular for corn and, and wheat, left in the bin. Farmers are trying to decide how long do I store, is there any opportunities. And I, I'm, I'm encouraging them to, to look at it and see. I do think there will be uh, price volatility. We will have these little pops or spikes in the market. The problem is they're going to be very, very short in duration. They're going to be open and closed very quickly. So what I'm encouraging farmers to do is think ahead and plan ahead, try and anticipate where you think those prices may be topping out. Put some orders in ahead of time rather than waiting and be trying to re be responsive, be proactive. If the orders fill, if you're able to sell something, great. You've been, a been able to take advantage of it. If not, you haven't lost anything. In today's world, we're at, right now we're trying to minimize our losses. So it's very, very difficult psychologically to try and sell at a small loss. But I'd rather sell at a small loss 
and, and live to farm another day than have a large loss and miss the opportunity. The supply chain is filled. Uh, the pipeline is there. We're trying to figure out, you know, if we need to have a cutback in acreage, if we need to reduce the amount of acres, how do we do that? What acres are, we, are those going to shift into? Are we going to have some acres that are not farmed this year, that are abandoned because of low prices? And we really haven't seen this kind of environment since the, the mid-2000s. Um, so we really have to go back quite a ways in time to find an, an environment, an economic environment similar to what we're seeing today. And for those younger guys that haven't witnessed this, this is a big deal for This them. is a new experience. This is definitely a new experience. And, and one of the things I'm emphasizing in my, in my marketing talks is um, I get a lot of questions, are we returning to the 80s? Um, and on the finance side, there are some similarities. The financial implications are similar. But on the marketing side, this is a completely different world. Um, the, the marketing environment we're in today versus what we saw in the 80s are very, very different. And so we're all trying to learn the, the new environment we're living in. Frayne Olson, the Crops Economist, Marketing Specialist with NDSU. Thanks a ton for joining us today. Well, again, I appreciate the invitation. All right. Coming up next on Ag Week TV. The founder and owner of the Horsch Company pays a visit to the Valley from Germany. He says U.S. farmers could be losing a big slice of their export market soon. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. Their custom-built fertilizer systems are the crown jewel of the Total Ag lineup. Total Ag systems come with a fully customizable fill system, and the variable rate hydraulic drive system works with John Deere displays for real-time feedback and complete fertilizer monitoring. Total Ag's field-tested design allows precise control and accurate application in your fields for better yields and more profit. Contact Total Ag by phone or visit TotalAg.com. Keep your pickup box organized with Delta Storage Solutions from Home of Economy. Our Delta toolboxes keep your gear safe and dry while maximizing storage. Then add on a Delta fuel tank. It integrates seamlessly with our Delta toolboxes to save you space. And Home of Economy's got your tank accessories, fill right transfer pumps, Baldwin fuel filters, and the region's largest selection of hoses and nozzles. Get your pickup box storage solutions today at the guaranteed lowest price. Home of Economy. Who do you call when you have grain dryer issues? His number is probably already on your phone. Guy Kittleson of American Farm Equipment, 701-793-8804. With over 35 years experience in grain dryer sales, Guy was grain dryers before grain dryers were cool. He sells and services American, Chief, and Deluxe grain dryers with capacities from 200 to 10,000 bushels per hour. Guy works on them all. But when it comes to confidence and dependability in your grain dryer, buy from Guy. Guy Kittleson, American Farm Equipment. Drainage Solutions is experienced in the tri-state area. Their skilled employees will design, implement, and maintain the best drainage system available. Drainage Solutions uses state-of-the-art equipment along with the best data resources available to design a drainage system that they guarantee will be both efficient and cost-effective. Whether you're considering drain tile for the first time or adding to your existing drainage system, let Drainage Solutions design the most appropriate site-specific drainage for your needs. The founder and owner of Horsch, a German farm machine manufacturing company, met with area farmers and implement dealers recently. Michael Horsch made his first piece of equipment in 1982 when he was just 21 years old. It was a no-till cedar for his dad's farm. He didn't plan to own an international manufacturing company. He just wanted to farm. Land in Germany was scarce. Now he has a farm and much of the land is used to test new practices and equipment made at his six plants around the world, including Mapleton, North Dakota. This is just an assembly plant now, but plans are in the works to add parts manufacturing when the ag economy improves. And right now, obviously, uh, our North American business needs quite a bit of attention just because of the, the, the business is down so much, more than anywhere else in the world, actually. Western Europe, Eastern Europe, uh, and the rest of the world is, is okay. It's down, but it's okay. 
but as far as North America went down, uh, uh, I, have, I haven't seen that before in my lifetime. Contrary to what you might think, Horsch says this is a good time to invest in infrastructure. He says they'll be ready for expansion when the ag economy is in better shape. And he does think it will improve. Horsch says several years of good production have left the world with an excess of many major crops. But he also says bad weather can change that very fast. He says he's concerned with the world's growing and rapid rejection of GMO crops. Rose Dunn has more. A significant percent of North American production is exported to Europe, but many European countries and others around the world have already announced bans on GMO crops, and the European Union is considering a ban on glyphosate. First of all, the farmers have to listen and understand what's going to happen in the rest of the world uh, if they want to stay in business. I'm not telling them that they have to change. I'm just raising the, 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 the issues and saying, guys, we better understand what's going on and uh, let's learn how we go about this. And it's not a small movement, it's a big movement. Horst says one of the world's largest supermarket chains wants no GMO products by 2020. No GMO crops are grown in Europe. We wished years ago that we also could have Roundup Ready corn or Roundup Ready soybeans or Roundup Ready canola. We wished. Now we are glad that we didn't get it because now we, then, uh, we are basically quicker into these new markets that were, were, were the, the markets is asking for it. There needs to be some work on both sides. Carson Klosterman farms near Widemere, North Dakota and is the president of the North Dakota Corn Growers Association. He says he's concerned about what will happen as GMOs are banned around the world and how fast it's happening. He thinks better education could help, but it may be too late. And they need to realize that the same people that that okay their drugs that they're taking have approved these GMOs and, and the billions and billions of people that have been fed and the animals that have been fed with no issues. I don't know why they don't want to accept that when they accept other science. Klosterman says it's a complicated problem with no easy fix. You know the next big argument is that we're going to be back to all these different chemicals. When GMO crops came along they took a lot of extra passes of chemical off our to-do list. Rose Dunn, Ag Week TV. Horsch also talked about traceability in crops, which makes it possible to track GMOs along the supply chain. It allows for close monitoring of potential health or environmental effects. Up next on Ag Week TV, has spring sprung? A look at your agri-weather forecast. And later, Jonathan Knutson has a story on the importance of ag banking in modern agriculture. What I believe sets us apart is the way our products are crafted. Every frame has to have a precision to it that you don't see in other brands. It's what makes it a true Minn Kota window. As a manufacturer, if you don't actually farm, there's so many places where you go wrong if you really don't have a true gut feeling for the end result. From the seed placement, fertilizer placement, packing, weigh scales, variable rates, everything that we have is put there to make you more money. At the end of the day, we guarantee that with Super Seed Guarantee. Tightline Drainage is the Red River Valley's most trusted name for tile. Tightline uses the Port Hydromax plow and also Port Hydromax trenchers for installing our laterals and mainline accurately. The science behind drain tile proves healthier plant growth and greater yields. Tightline Drainage also sells pipes, fittings, tiling plows, land tillage equipment, and more. Tightline Drainage is owned and operated by experienced agricultural professionals who understand the need for progressive agricultural practices. Call Tightline Drainage for a free drainage design today at 701-235-1900. This is Dennis Belisky. If you're trying to save a little money this spring but still need to make a major purchase before planting, check out resourceauction.com. Our March 23rd auction is chock full of good units that will sell to the highest bidder. Our suppliers have made the decision to liquidate equipment, and this is without a doubt the region's premier spring consignment event. Nearly 100 major units from 2010 and up with many tractors, trucks, and planters. Check it out at resourceauction.com, and we'll see you on March 23rd. 
Grain Max has over 25 years experience and we know there's not a lot of time to get the harvest off the field and safely in the bin. The Grain Max telescopic swing auger is retractable, allowing the operator to telescopically and hydraulically position the auger hopper under the trailer. The operator never has to climb under the trailer to wrestle the swing hopper into position. Contact your nearest dealer or call North Country Marketing. It's hard not to take pride in what I do. I think everyone here sees the value in what they're creating. We work hard to make every window a true Minkota window. Ag Week weather this week, we are talking about some dry conditions across uh, much of the western United States. Uh, that's been the situation for quite some time now. And as we go into the next uh, week or two, we are going to see a bit of a change than what we saw the last couple of weeks. You know, the first half of March started out very mild across the northern tier of the U.S. We saw record highs for many locations, but it also was quite dry and a little bit more active weather down in the southwest. They have seen a little bit of rain, which is good news for California because it has been very dry, but we are also seeing some dry conditions in the northern plains, and hopefully it does look like we will see a little bit more active weather going into the latter half of March. And also talking about March through May, springtime, it does appear like we are going to see an overall above average trend, some more mild weather, even though we are going to see times when it's cooler than average, the overall trend is going to be for some mild weather across the northern U.S., cooler than average down to the south across Texas and parts of New Mexico. Now, as we look at the jet stream for the upcoming week, uh, you know, it's been pretty mild for the last couple of weeks of March. This week, we are going to see a little bit more of a dip in the jet stream, and that's going to allow for some uh, cooler temps, uh, talking about highs, uh, maybe near or maybe even slightly below average, but it also is going to be a little bit more active. So we are looking at chances for rain and snow with the subtropical jet stream staying well down to the south, but there will be some ridging. Uh, so it looks like there will be some times when we actually have some warmer air and maybe some even drier conditions across the desert southwest. So uh, talking about precipitation, it does appear like it's going to stay dry at least across the southwestern U.S., so California, where it's been very dry for the past couple of years, uh, it's going to stay that way. We're not going to see really uh, much in the way of rainfall this week, at least, and also through uh, New Mexico and Texas, but it does become a bit more stormy across the eastern U.S., so again, southwest staying dry and actually probably heating up a bit as we get into the springtime. And then, like I said, stormy across the eastern seaboard. Looks to be some active weather there. Maybe some rain or snow showers into the Great Lakes and into the northern part of the U.S., which is good news because, uh, as we saw in the drought monitor, it has been pretty dry across the Dakotas and into Minnesota. So to recap, looks like we are going to see some active weather down across the south and eastern U.S., maybe some severe weather. That has already happened during the first half of March, and then that southwest U.S. drought will continue. California, not likely to see some rainfall, maybe a little bit here and there through the springtime month and over the Northern Plains, it looks like that mild weather will continue. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, held bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust as honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. No! 
In today's marketplace, maximizing your harvest is more valuable than ever. Improve the efficiency of your operation by adding a Crary Air Reel to your harvester today. A continuous stream of high-velocity air quickly feeds crop back to the auger, getting your crop off the cutter bar and into the header. This minimizes shattering and reduces the amount of header loss. At harvest time, every second counts, and every bean counts, so you can count on Crary. It's time to demand more. With microessentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only microessentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Microessentials, get more from every acre. We believe in a fair and balanced approach to state and federal regulation. Proposed changes to OSHA's anhydrous ammonia policy, EPA's Waters of the U.S., the Clean Air Act, and endangered species are a few examples of what we are facing. The one-size approach doesn't work for North Dakota. Agriculture Commissioner Doug Goring wants to work with you to protect our state. Go to our website to see the latest issues that affect not only agriculture today, but for future generations. Ag Week TV, sponsored by Peterson Farm Seed. Dealing with an ag lender is a big part of a producer's routine. Ag Week's Jonathan Knudsen has more on this increasingly important role in modern ag. Modern ag is a big tent. Many people and many professions play an important, necessary role. Every spring, I visit with one of those professions. This year, I'm visiting with an ag banker. The last, you know, five to seven years have been, it's been easy, you know, and it's been easy for me as a farmer, it's been easy for me as a banker. You just, guys would come in and you just renew it and <laughs> off you go and, you know, we're looking at things a little closer now. And if the prices are bad, they're bad for me too. Mm -hmm. And if the yields are bad, they're bad for me too. Or if they're good, either way. So I, I think I have a pretty good understanding of the numbers they're telling me. So a good relationship between a banker and their client whether it's a farmer or a rancher, is based on mutual trust and it's based on information. The banker has a lot of tools available to help the farmer or a rancher. It's just that I think sometimes the customers are hesitant to, uh, to come forward. I hope my customers understand is that if I tell them something they don't want to hear, it's not because I don't care about them, it's because I want them to be successful in what they do. And we may not always agree on what the numbers say. I really try to make them successful. If you're a farmer or rancher, you know how important egg bankers are. I hope that people outside egg realize it too. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. Have you heard? It's calving season. Up next on Ag Week TV, a livestock stewardship specialist has some important things to remember as we get into this busy time of year. For home delivery of Ag Week, log on to agweek.com or call 800-811-2580. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. North Dakota soybean farmers put food on tables all over the world, including their own. That's why it's important that we produce healthy, safe, affordable food. It's also important that we keep up with demand. Today's farmer feeds 155 people per year. Compare that to a farmer only two generations ago who produced enough for just 26. Most North Dakota farms are still family owned and operated because our care of the land that feeds the world today is our children's legacy for tomorrow. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. 
Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. The state is always going to need milk, and it's critical that North Dakotans get milk from within their state. Being able to find a good, reliable source for capital is a real challenge. Senate Bill 2351, it's about utilizing a management tool on hog and dairy farms to partner and incorporate with our neighbors or other individuals so that we can build a business. And the more that you can do that, the better off our entire farming community gets to be. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. For many ranchers, calving season is in full swing. Dr. Gerald Stucka, NDSU's Livestock Stewardship Specialist, offers some advice as ranchers kick off the often sleep-deprived season into high gear. I think it's important for our producers to remember a few things first off. Most beef cows can calve all by themselves. They usually don't need our interference or our intervention. If you have a cow that's in trouble or a heifer that's in trouble, you need to recognize what the stages and the signs of labor really are. We talk about three stages. The first stage is just thinking about it. She's maybe just twitching her tail. She's maybe got that look in her eye, like especially on a heifer, that something's not right. She's a little nervous about something. Uh, and that's usually the first sign that something is going to take place fairly soon. The second stage is when they're fixing. There's contractions that occur. Her tail is twitching a lot more. She may hold her tail out for extended periods. She may get up and down many times and usually they'll lay down on the right side. <clears throat> it kind of takes the rumen out of position so that it's easier to deliver that calf. And then the third stage would, would be when the actual calving procedure takes place and that's with the front feet coming and the head between the, the front legs. That's the normal presentation that a calf should be born. Then she should be able to deliver that calf in an hour at max. On a heifer, I'm going to give that heifer a little bit more time. It's the first calf that she's had. And we talk about that because you need to understand when intervention is necessary. Most often our cows don't need help. They can deliver a calf all by themselves, but it, sometimes you have an abnormal presentation. And if it's something that I as a producer think I can't handle, I need to call my veterinarian. So recognizing when something is not right is really critical. Recognizing when I need to contact my veterinarian to help me with this calving difficulty are really cr important, critical issues for this spring. This week's photo of the week comes from Chad Limison. Cool shot from inside the cab. Chad said he was out doing a pre-harvest burn down of Roundup to ripen the spring wheat faster. It was taken near Finley, North Dakota. We'd like to see your ag photo. Send us your best shot to photos at agweek.com. We need your name, location, and what's going on in the photo. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. For all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.